surgeryandmedicine.com, your med school in your pocket. Hi, uh, in this demonstration we're going to show you how to use a cannula um, that allows you to get intravenous access to the body to take blood and also to give drugs and fluids. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the equipment that you're going to need in order to be able to put a cannula in place and we'll pan onto that now. Okay. Um, the first item that you're going to need is a tourniquet so that you can actually um, get all the blood into the veins so that then you can feel them to put a cannula in place. Now, these are the cannulas that we've got here. You'll notice that there's different colours and they correspond to a different size of the actual needle and the, the plastic portion of the cannula will stay in place in the vein. Um, cannulas stay in, in place for longer than the, uh, than the needle when you take blood, um, often up to 48 hours. And so you do need to make extra sure that you're being very, very hygienic um, and you're going to need a sand cloth to uh, prep the area of skin to make sure you're not introducing any bugs. So we've got that. Um, you're also going to need a flush. We've got just 0.9% sodium chloride and a 5ml syringe so that we can flush all the blood through the, the cannula, ensure that it's in the correct place and stop it from blocking up. And after all your hard work, you're going to want to stick it down. Uh, this is just a, a specialised sticker that gets called a tegadin that's been designed to, to fit snugly around the cannula um, and hold it in place. Um, so we'll go on to demonstrate how to, to put a cannula in that. So we're going to just talk you through exactly how the cannula fits together here because it can look quite complex but once you know what, you, what you're dealing with it's very, very simple. So just take it out of its packet here. Okay. Now, this is just the sheath protecting the needle and on here is the cap that unscrews and fits into the the end of the cannula here to stop any blood coming out or any fluids from leaking. You've got a needle that as you can see slides out of the cannula so what we'll do is we'll take the protective cap off so you can see this is how the construct should be when it goes into the vein initially with the edge of the bevel just poking out the end of the, the cannula sheath itself. So when you withdraw the needle, once it's in the vein, as you can see, the needle comes out, but you're left with this little area of tubing which forms the cannula and that stays in the vein. So once the needle comes out, you're left with a, an open tube at the end of this cannula here, which is what this little uh, device at the end just screws in quite nicely there and now you can attach fluids and all sorts into the bottom there instead of the cap but that's quite useful and just in the short term if you just want to have the, the cannula in place for use later. To flush the cannula you've got a port in the top and you can put drugs and things through that um, but you can also inject them straight through there if you'd rather. So that's the workings of the cannula really and once you're, once you're happy with those um, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm not going to resheath the needle because that's dangerous. We'll just pop that straight into the sharp spin. So when you're popping a cannula in place, you obviously want to go through the same steps as we did with the venipuncture. So we've consented the patient, ensured with two pieces of uh, patient demographics that we've got the right individual. And then we want to get them in a comfortable position with a tourniquet on to fill their, their veins. Now, um, with cannulation, you want to make sure that you've got the best possible vein um, and what do I mean by that? I mean one that you can see and feel, but also one that's very straight because you have to actually advance the cannula into the vein and if it's very tortuous or curved, um, it's much more difficult to do that. Now, some extra tips that we didn't mention um, in the last podcast are you can get the patient to squeeze their hand like this, that often brings up the veins in the back of the hand. Like we said, we need the, the arm to be lower than the, uh, the, the height of the heart we can actually get them to hold it down the side of the bed to really fill it completely full. Um, failing that, if we're still not getting good, uh, good veins coming up, we can use a manual blood pressure cuff. 
we can inflate it to somewhere between diastolic and systolic blood pressure, which is a, allows the blood to still get into the, the veins, but not to get back into the arterial, uh, back into the venous system, so you get the, the best um, engorgement of the veins. You can also um, use hot water, immerse the hand or the arm into hot water, which will bring the, the blood and bring the, uh, the veins up as much as possible. So with Charlotte here, we're going to demonstrate putting a camera into the back of the hand. We can actually see a, a nice vein that runs just down the middle of the hand here, nice and straight. We can see it, we can feel it, um, and we know that that should be a, a fairly easy place to get a cannula um, and shouldn't be too obstructive to her. Um, often cannulas in the anticubital fossa, whilst they're better for access, um, can be quite obstructive to the patient. They often get caught and kinked when you bend your arm. So we'll go for one here. Um, first thing that we want to do is ensure that we've got all the equipment as we said before and we'll also ensure that we've got sharps in the close vicinity so that once we've finished we can actually get our sharps and our needles into that sharps bin. I often like to use a, a, a um, cardboard container um, just to pop the needle in just for a short period of time whilst I get everything ready and then transfer it to the sharps bin. So I've got my gloves on and I want to get everything else prepped. So first thing I'm going to do is open the container of the cannula and I've selected a, a blue cannula here which um, in our hospital is actually one of the smaller ones and we've got a little twisty white cap that will sit in the end of the cannula and stop any bleeding at the end of the procedure. I'd like to put that on my tray then withdraw the sheath you know that you've got your uh, your venflon in place there. Now we need to, as we said before, prep the hand, so wash it nicely with the alcohol hand gel. I'm going to kneel down, get the vein to be as straight as possible, I can feel it, I can see it, I'm coming in at an acute angle in the direction of the vein, and I can just advance it and I can see the blood coming back into the end of the cannula and I can actually advance the cannula forward like so. Now at this point we know that the, vein, that the cannula is in the right place, this is filling with blood and that we've got that there. We want to release the tourniquet so that no more blood's coming. We're going to get the cap, ask the patient to hold up the arm higher than the level of their heart so there's less chance of it bleeding we're going to press pressure over the distal end of where the end of the cannula is, so a few centimetres from there, so slowly withdraw the needle, and then we've got a small amount of bleeding, but not very much. Pop the cannula, uh, the cap in place, so we've got a perfect cannula on the back of the hand without spilling any blood or angering any of the nursing staff. So we can now just transfer our needle into the sharp spin so we know that's out of the way and safe. And we can attach the, the tegaderm onto the cannula like so. Just hold it in place. Take the sticker off. Uh, if you're concerned that the patient might knock the cannula out, what you can do is um, you can use some bandage just to hold that in place a bit more securely. Now we've got our sodium chloride that we're going to use to flush, we're going to make sure that it's the right strength and that it's in date. And we take our 5ml syringe draw the sodium chloride up, expel any excess air from the syringe and we can flip this little blue cap at the top, insert this into the, the centre portion and inject carefully and slowly ensuring that we're not putting too much pressure on the patient and then we can just see that we've washed away the blood from the centre portion of that cannula. This is the plunger of the syringe going down very easily and we can't see any um, sort of blebs or raising of the skin around the end of the cannula which might suggest that we've actually caused a break in the, in the vein 
Um, if that happens, you can lose it. No use and you're going to have to take it on. Um, once you've done that, you can thank the patient, make sure you put all your equipment away, and it's also very useful to put the sticker with the date on top of the cannula so people know exactly how long it's been there. Because these really shouldn't stay in for too much longer than 48 hours because they can pose an, an effective risk. Um, when you see a cannula, the things that you want to look for to make sure it's not infected um, is pain around the cannula site, any redness, any swelling, um, or something called phlebitis, which is just a bit of inflammation along the area of the vein, which can feel a bit uh, hard and almost string-like. Um, if you see those signs, you should um, remove the cannula. And in order to remove the cannula, you need gloves, you need a cotton wool, um, and you need your sharp spin, you take the tegaderm off, put your cotton wool over the site of the end of the cannula, withdraw the cannula gently, put it in the sharp spin, and then tape over, and then that's all done. Now cannula, um, you can actually take blood from the end of this. If you unscrew this cap before you flushed it, you can put a syringe or a vacutainer in, and actually um, you need the blood pressure cuff on there, and you can actually withdraw blood from the end of the cannula. Um, for this demonstration, we've not done that, um, but you can actually do that rather than taking another sample for, for blood samples. These can be connected up to fluids um, or you can inject any drugs that you need through these. Um, in emergency situations, the best places to, to put cannula are actually in the antecubital fossa where you should actually get two, one in each antecubital fossa and they should be the biggest diameter that you can find because actually the, the flow rate is proportional to the, the, width, the um, width of the cannula itself. So the, the wider the bore of the cannula, the better in an emergency situation. Um, just for this demonstration, a small one will suffice. So I hope that's uh, given you some insight into why we use cannulas and how best to cite them. Um, and I think that's the end of this demonstration. Thank you.